What's up, Covalence friends? Today, we are going to be doing part three of our emails by API series. We are going to be getting into the Mailgun API. So enough wasting time, let's get right into it. All right, so we're starting off on our Mailgun website here. So it's just mailgun.com. And we've already signed up for an account and it's pretty similar to signing up for SendGrid. Although I think it's a little bit easier. They ask you for your payment info uh, with Mailgun. You don't have to, you can uncheck the little box. Um, but if you don't put in payment info, I think they only allow you to send uh, emails up to five recipients that you actually have to verify each one for. And so uh, it's a little bit different than the SendGrid process. They're actually making you verify recipients. Um, but what you are gonna do is, uh, if you want, you can just go ahead and put your credit card info in. They don't actually charge you anything. I think it's still free to use up to a certain number of emails per month. But if you go over that number, they automatically charge you a fraction of a penny or something per email. And so it's understandable that they just want payment info on file. Um, but if you don't and you only need to send it to five recipients, you can go ahead and just authorize up to five and only send it to those people without any payment info at all. So uh, again, what you're going to do is you're going to click into sending here and then it's going to list your domains and you can't actually hook up a custom domain, I think, without upgrading to a paid plan or having your payment info in at the, at the very least, because I think they have a flexible plan. Um, but we're going to go ahead and use the sandbox environment. So we're going to click into that. and. Here's your domain right here. This is the actual domain that you're gonna use. Um, and they have some pretty cool API docs here that'll kind of show you the code you would need to send a request to the API. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and just show you how to do it with the NPM package and everything in this video. Um, but here, underneath here, now if you're on a bigger screen because this is all zoomed in, everything's been kind of condensed and dropped this underneath. I believe this area is actually off to the right with like a normal size screen. So it kind of dropped underneath on my screen just because, uh, you know, my screen's zoomed in a little bit. But it's going to essentially be your the email address of the authorized recipient. Now I'm going to use a temporary email address. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy that, paste it in there, and I'm going to save the recipient. Now it's going to be unverified until we actually go in and click that email here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just verify that real quick. It's a pretty awful looking UI to do this, but it does the job, success. So that should be good. Let's go ahead and go back to this list and we'll be ready to uh, you know, receive emails later on. Now it's gonna go ahead and update that. We'll just get out of here. And now it doesn't actually refresh this automatically. If you refresh the page here, uh, you'll see that it is actually verified. So we are good to go with sending emails uh, to that email address. So. Let's go ahead and we're going to kind of continue on down, down the road and we're going to kind of get into some code here. So let's go ahead and look at our Mailgun project. Now this is just a cloned repo of our next template. We're using Next.js here. Uh, we have that link to that repo in the description below. And if you haven't watched the SendGrid video or the SendGrid uh, or part two, I believe it is, this is part three. If you haven't watched part two yet where we go through SendGrid, we're gonna basically create the exact same application except we're gonna be using Mailgun. Now I'm gonna go through creating most of the logic up front and then I'm gonna add the Mailgun stuff at the end. And so if you already watched part two, if you already watched the SendGrid episode, then I would just skip ahead a little bit further into the Mailgun specific logic. But what we're gonna do first is we're actually going to build out our API page. So we're going to pop into pages API and we're gonna use hello.ts, why not? Um, and we're going to first just kind of stub out everything. So we're gonna first make our API key and it's going to be, again, we're gonna kind of say process.env.mailgun key or we're going to just place the API key in here. But normally, again, you'd wanna be using environment variables. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to kind of rewrite this handler function to allow us to essentially handle a post request. So we can say if request.method equals equals post, then we are going to kind of perform our function. Otherwise, we're going to send a 404 and we're basically going to ensure that, you know, we're going to say success false basically. All right, and we obviously have to change our data type because we're using the response as the next API response with the generic data. So this is just going to be success with two C's. I'm not spelling that very well today. And it's gonna be of type Boolean. So that grids are, gets rid of our error. And inside of our 
post method, what we're going to do is we're going to actually be checking a lot of stuff on this body. So we're going to say const body equals request.body, or we're just going to short circuit to an object. Um, and then we're going to say the intro is going to be body.intro. Whoops, forgot the equals body.intro. Um, or we're just going to say empty string and our content equals body.content. Wow, I am not typing well today, today guys. Sorry about that. All right. So we have intro and content, and then we're going to have our email as well. So our email itself is going to be essentially what we're going to be passing into our mail generator. So we're going to use MailGen, which is an NPM package. Again, we use that with SendGrid. Um, but if you're not using that, you can go ahead and kind of freeform this. If you wanted to kind of create your own HTML template or your own text template, that's fine. You can do that. We're going to kind of, you know, cheat a little bit and use a mail generator. Um, and so to do that, it requires this interface, which is basically an object with the key body. And then we're going to essentially put our body.name or, you know, customer in here. We're going to have our intro and we're going to have an outro that's going to consist of our content. And that's basically the interface that MailGen takes in. MailGen, again, is the NPM package that we will be um, installing in a second. But again, we're going to kind of continue down this road of stubbing out our, um, you know, request here or request handler. So we have our try catch block. Now this is going to be basically where we actually call the mailgun function. So we're going to call the, you know, mailgun send function here. And if we want to catch the error, we can res.status 500. And again, we will send the success false in there. And otherwise, if mailgun is successful, we want to res.status 200. And we are going to dot JSON the success true this time. All right. Wow. A little bit of dyslexia. All right. So, all right. Perfect. We have our thing. We have our back end stubbed out. And again, we're going to basically be calling, you know, it's going to be slash API slash hello. And we're going to be sending a post request to this, right? All right. Let's go ahead and we're going to pop open our index here and we're going to stub out our front end real quick. So the front end, we're going to keep it extremely simple and we're basically just going to kind of keep everything within this one section here and we're going to pull out, we're going to actually stub out another div that we're going to give a class name. We're going to add a little bit of up top and bottom padding. And again, this is using Tailwind. If you guys have never used Tailwind, check it out. Tailwind's an awesome little CSS library that makes it very easy to just quickly uh, get up and running with every class you could possibly need from every property. And so we're going to basically just add some padding up in the top and bottom, and then we're going to center all of our text, which is basically just going to be centering a button. So we're going to now create a button and the button is going to have an on click handler that is going to essentially create, send a request to create this email, right? All right. So, this is going to basically just kind of create a fetch request. So let's go ahead and we're going to try catch here and our try catch. If we fail, we're just going to alert that our email failed. Otherwise we want to basically alert that we have an email success. Now um, for what's actually in our button, we're just going to put the word send in there. So it's going to basically just be a little button that says send. And for our actual fetch request, we are going to call or we're going to await our fetch. It's going to, again, be to forward slash API forward slash hello. And we're going to create the method as a post. And our body is going to be our JSON stringified object where we pass in a name. So again, we can just use Johnny Appleseed. Um, we're going to send it to our cells or at least not to our cells, but to the email address that we put up there. So let's go ahead and grab that one more time. So that's going to be this email address here, the temporary email address. So we're going to send it to there. Now, if you put something that isn't an offer authorized recipient, Mailgun will actually send you back a failure. So we need to make sure that we send the right property or the right recipient in there. Um, 
unless you're paying for Mailgun and then you can send it to whoever you want. All right, so the subject, let's do, you know, click me, something super clickbaity. Our intro is welcome to Covalence. And our content, which is going to be our outro per se, is going to be check out our amazingly affordable community membership. All right, and if you guys don't know, that's at HTTPS forward slash forward slash covance.io slash membership. Check it out, a little harmless plug. All right, so we have our intro, our content, and last thing we have to actually do is set our headers. So let's make sure we do that outside of the JSON that's stringify. Um, but let's see, put this here, headers. And the headers that we're going to put is going to be content type and it's application JSON. All right. And if you don't send that, then we don't actually get the correct body. So we won't, we'll get an empty, an empty object as our body and our backend. So we got to make sure that we put the correct headers in there, the content type application JSON. Now, if this is successful, we can grab the r.json of this and then we can check you know um, if res.success we can alert email sent you know otherwise we can throw an error per se so we'll just throw a generic error that will then be caught by our catch statement here which will just alert email failed so all right, so we have basically everything we need from the front end, and now we just need to actually add stuff to our back end. So we're gonna go back to our hello.ts. We're going to now open up a new terminal because we have some NPM packages that we need to add. So we are going to yarn install, or it's not yarn install, it's yarn add. I always confuse that. So yarn add, we're gonna have mailgun.js. And we also need a package called form-data. Now Mailgun has its NPM package. It's a little bit more, I would say, focused towards developers, like a little bit more of that power user feel in my opinion. And they keep the library completely universal, even though they kind of use this form data object in it that you have to pass in. Now, if you want, you can kind of create your own object that has its own functions that can kind of intercept the functions that Mailgun is using. but. Um, for the most part, form the form data package does work. And so you can go ahead and you can kind of pass that in yourself. Um, and then we're also going to do our mail gen package as well as we're going to grab the types as well. So we don't need typings for form data or mail gun, um, but we do need it for mail gen. And so we're going to save and that should be a pretty quick install and boom, we're done. All right, so we can double check our package.json real quick, just to make sure. Let's go ahead and change this. It still has the old name in there. So we have changed the mail gun. We have our types mail gen. We have our form data here. We're on 4.0.0 right now. Mail gen, mail gen and mailgun.js. So everything installed, we're currently on 9.2.0. So if you guys are watching this in the future, something may have changed, but I think for the most part, um, it should be fairly similar. So let's go ahead, we're gonna go back to our hello.ts here, and we're going to kind of start writing logic or start importing things that we need to actually create this mailgun request. So we can import mailgun, and we can also import a type called mailgun message data. And that's going to be from mailgun.js. And then we're going to import star as form data from form data. And then we can import star as mail gen. I guess we can do a capital G here uh, from mail gen. And then that would be about it for this. But what we're actually going to also need is we're going to need our domain name as well. But we could use a variable for this. Um, you know, if we wanted to say const, uh, you know, domain equals process.env.mailgun domain or this, we could do something along this line. So, so you could actually have the mailgun domain as an environment variable, which would be nice. Uh, otherwise you could have it as a static variable as well. So that's gonna be where we actually put our sandbox value. All right, so 
Now let's create our mail generator real quick. So we can say const, uh, let's just say mail gen equals, and it's gonna be new mail gen. And inside here, we put the theme, which we're gonna use default again. And we can also put our product, which is an object. And we can have our name, just as we're gonna have it as covalence for now. And we also want, we could have a link or a logo. Um, let's see, it says, uh, oh, we did something wrong. What did we do wrong? Let's see, a namespace style import cannot be called out if it cause a failure at runtime. All right, so something's wrong here. We have stars mail gen from mail gen. All right, oh, we may just need to not be, there we go. All right, so we actually don't need to do the import star as, we just import mail gen from mail gen. That's actually a uh, Next.js setting that they actually have already have for the tsconfig.json. I'm assuming that's the ES6 interop, um, but if you're not using the ES6 interop, then you actually need to do the import star. So again, this might be different depending on the project that you're using, whether you import star or not. Uh, but for our particular case here, we need to make sure that we just import mail gen from the mail gen package. And then we also have a product with, or our issue with the product, which is requiring a link. So we can say HTTPS forward slash forward slash covalence.io. All right, so we have our mail generator pretty much up and running now. And finally, what we're gonna wanna do is we're going to create our actual mailgun instance. So we're going to say const mailgun equals, and it's gonna be new mailgun. And we're gonna pass in our actual form data here. So we pass in the entire form data object. Again, I messed this up, it's for everything. So you actually have to do, because it's an ES6 interop, you have to actually do without the star value. But if you weren't using that, you would need to actually put the import star. So again, um, just to understand that difference there, if you guys have any questions, drop it in the comments below. But we have new mailgun form data. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a client and we pass in options here. And what we pass in is username and we pass in key as well, which is going to be our API key. Um, now for our username, the, uh, you would think that it would actually be the username that we use to create our account, but we actually just pass in API. Um, this is kind of a weird thing. I, I haven't looked into exactly why they decided to do this, but you just pass in API when you're actually using the API here. Uh, I believe this is just some sort of author, auth, you know, authorization or authentication issue that they have, or maybe some sort of legacy thing from one of their, the way they used to do things with their old package. But um, because they do the username key here, we are gonna be using this API key that we're going to grab in just a second. And we just pass in API as the username and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and we're gonna grab all of our keys and our domain as well. So let's first grab the domain. So we're gonna go ahead and copy our domain. We're gonna minimize this. And we're going to kind of just paste that in there. And again, guys, um, you are not going to actually have access to this stuff. So don't feel free, do not bother copying all this info. It's not gonna work if you put this in here. We're going to be deleting this API key, so it's not gonna work for you. Uh, so sorry to say, but you know we're not gonna mess that up. All right, so we can also go ahead and we can grab our API keys as well, which I can grab from right here. So it's going to take us to a separate page here. And we have our private API key that we can copy just like this. Now they have a public API key for some sort of email verification service they have. They also have a webhook signing key, which is really cool. Again, like I said, this is kind of a little bit more power user friendly. So they have webhooks. They have a ton of different logs and analytics. They have templates, suppressions. They have ways to uh, whitelist IPs, which is really cool. So again, I really like the control that Mailgun gives you. Um, I like it a little bit more than SendGrid, I believe, but it is a little bit less user-friendly in my opinion. So uh, it's up to you whether you know which one you like more. The pricing is very similar. I think SendGrid allows you a certain number per day where uh, Mailgun allows you a certain number per month. And so again, it's totally dependent on what your particular needs are. Both services work phenomenally in my opinion. So again, um, definitely a huge shout out to both of these services. But we're gonna make sure we grab this key here 
And we're gonna go ahead and paste that right here. So let's see, there is a, a new line at the end of that, which is weird. All right, so hopefully that actually got the whole API key, that new line in there is kind of weird. Um, but we have our mail gen now. We also have our mail gun created. And so what we can actually do now is when we send this thing, we can just do the mail gun. We're going to await mailgun.messages.create. And you can see that we want to pass in the actual domain as the first argument and then the data as our second argument. So what this data is actually going to be is it's essentially uh, the mailgun message data, right? So if you look at this create, you can see that it's mailgun message data. And so if you needed to kind of just grab, you know, this particular interface from somewhere, I only put it up here just so we can kind of see this. But again, we have the from to CC BCC plus all these variables for things like templates and things like that. Um, and then, we'll, you know, again, this extends uh, mailgun message content, which is going to be the text HTML. So we want to make sure that we have the from and the to and everything along those lines. So uh, let's go ahead and just start kind of filling in, you know, this for the most part. So we can say the, you know, to is going to be body dot two. We're going to have our from, which, you know, the from itself, uh, you could do it as, you know, it's actually a string in our case. Um, but what you can actually do is you can do something along the lines of, uh, you know, covalence, and then it can be, you know, the actual email address that we're going to use. So in our case, um, you know, you could say, I don't know, no reply at covalence. Io. Um, and then we have our subject, which is going to be body.subject, you know, or if that doesn't, if that's not in there, we'll just say email. And then we have our text, which our text is going to be our mail gen dot generate plain text of our actual email. And finally, our HTML, which is going to be the mail gen dot generate function, which creates the HTML by default of our email as well. So we now have to, oh, we have to make sure we change this to an async function as well. So, oh, default async, not async default. There we go. All right, that was just because of our await there. All right, so we have everything that we need in here. So we have our to, we have our from, we have our subject line. Again, we could pass up the from if we wanted to. Um, and this is, oh, I forgot the closing brace in there. So this is basically just a from parameter. Now, um, if we wanted to, it's funny how we actually need the opposite for mailgun, or sorry, for SendGrid, right? We need to have an authorized sender versus an authorized recipient for mailgun. So it's kind of the opposite there. Um, but again, we should be pretty much ready to go ahead and test this out. Uh, and yeah, let's just see what happens. So let's go ahead and yarn dev. And remember that we've already created our front end here that's going to send it to our email address here. And so we're going to pull open our browser, go to localhost 3000. You see we have our send function here, or our send button. Uh, we have no styling on it, it's just a completely transparent button. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click it. We have our local 3000 alert says email sent. So it looks like we got some sort of success here. And what we can do is we can go back to our disposable email here. We can see that we got something from covalence, no reply at covalence.io, which again, if you guys don't realize that you can literally put whatever you want in the sender address, that's for every email. Uh, so mailgun is basically just, you know, a, very transparent and clear window into how emails work. Uh, but again, we are from, we're sending from no reply. We sent it to our authorized recipient. If we go ahead and we can click into it, we can see that we have our, you know, our message in here. Hi, Johnny Appleseed, welcome to Valence. Check out our amazingly affordable community membership at HTTPS Covalence.io slash membership. So check out that link. That's the one link I do highly encourage you to copy and go to. So check out our membership. We have a ton of additional stuff that you know we can teach you in terms of sending emails and all sorts of stuff, building out your back end to make it way more robust. And yeah, we got everything we need. 
All right, so I hope that was helpful and I hope it was easy enough to understand, you know, pretty similar to using SendGrid. There are a lot of differences, but I find it kind of interesting that they've used almost opposite approaches in, ter in terms of like one having an authorized sender versus one having an authorized recipient. Uh, either way, I think it makes a lot of sense, but you know, I think both have their nuances and both you know, kind of have a certain type of user that'll gravitate more towards one than the other. And so uh, again, I tend to like both of them. I think they're very good for different use cases. So I tend to use both services and you know, it's up to you whether or not you, know, you wanna use Mailgun or SendGrid or next week we're gonna be going through MailChimp. So I uh, hope that you guys enjoyed. And if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you click that subscribe button. We're gonna be coming out with tons of new content. Um, check out our website, you know, check out our community membership where we're offering all of our courses, you know, for a low, low monthly subscription price, basically access to everything where we teach you the entire stack of development from, you know, the front end to the back end to databases and everything in between. So again, make sure you check that out. And uh, if you haven't checked out our merch, we have a merch store up. So it's in the link in the description below as well. And if you guys have any comments or ideas for future content, feel free to drop those in the comments as well. So, uh, Otherwise, we'll uh, hopefully see you soon. And until then, get out of here.